Hi, my name is Heather, and today I'm going to show you how to create a spread for a children's book for Amazon KDP in Photoshop. When you design a spread, it basically means that you have a big picture that's going to span across the left page and the right page. So rather than the left page being one picture and the right page being another picture, it's one continuous image. So it's very important the way that you create this because you want it to look like one continuous image and you want everything to line up properly. So here's my artwork. I got this scanned in and then I just cropped it to the correct size. But when you create your artwork, the first step is gonna to be to figure out what size you want your children's book to be. So if you go to this page on the KDP help site, it says set trim side bleed and margins. You can scroll down and these are gonna be all your book sizes. And this is the book size with bleed. That's the one you want to use since you want your picture to go all the way to the edge of the page. The children's book that I made was 8.25 by 8.25 inches. So I'm going to use that as the example. This is the final book size, 8.25 by 8.25. But this is the size that you want your file to be the image with all the text and everything because you want to have a little bit extra around the edge to get trimmed off. So this is the width that you would want a single page to be and then this is the height and this allows a little bit of extra for bleed. So for the width when we're designing a spread we actually want it to be double the width that we see here. So the width that we see here is 8.375 so if we go to a calculator and do 8.375 times 2, then we can see that our final width should be 16.75 inches. When you create your art, whether you're doing it digitally, like in Procreate or something like that, or whether you're scanning it in, basically the size that you want your art to be would be the inches times 300 because you want it to be 300 dpi so if you're creating your art for the width of your art you want it to be 16.75 times 300 so you would want the width of your art to be 5025 pixels and then for the height of your art and of course, this is just my example. If your final page size is gonna be different, you would wanna do something else. But for the final height, since we have eight and a half here, then we would do eight and a half times 300. So you would want the height to be 2550 pixels high. After you create your art, you can open it up in Photoshop and then you wanna create a new file and you wanna use the dimensions that you saw in that help page. So we want it to be in inches, so make sure that's selected. And then again, our width is going to be two times the width that we see here. So 8.375 times two, which was 16.75. So 16.75 inches wide. And then for the height, it said eight and a half. So let's do eight and a half for the height. And we wanna make sure it's 300 DPI and our color mode CMYK since it's for print and create. So this is our spread. You can do command minus or command plus to zoom in or out and then spacebar to move around. And then let's go over to our artwork and we're just going to do select all and then copy and go over to our spread and paste it in. So here is our page with just the artwork. Before we add our text, we're going to want some guides so that we know where we can put stuff. We don't want to put the text too close to the edge because we don't want it to get cut off. First, we're going to want to add our guides around the edges, which are going to be an eighth of an inch. 
you want to make sure you can see your rulers here so you can press command R or control R on Windows so that you can hide and show your rulers so make sure you can see your rulers and you want to make sure that they are in inches you can go to Photoshop preferences units and rulers and then you could change it here if it's not already in inches and you just want to drag a ruler down from the top and as you can see the ruler on the left that this is a half an inch this would be a quarter of an inch and so this would be an eighth of an inch and you just want to do that around the whole thing so always just go up an eighth of an inch then we want to have a guide to go down the center so that we know where the left page is versus where the right page is for the guide that goes down the center it's going to be basically half of this width which is the width of a single page so if we go back here if we forgot which I forgot and we find our original dimensions and we go here and remember the original width was 8.375 inches so we can do view new guide and 8.375 inches and you want to make sure it's vertical so that it's going up and down and click OK and so there we have a guide right down the center now if you want to be sure that you don't accidentally move your guides around because you can grab them and move them around. You can do view, lock guides, and then you won't be able to move them. So these are our guides for the bleed. So anything outside of this could get trimmed off, but you always want to make sure you do have some extra margin where you want your text to be inside. And for that extra margin, that's actually called the safe zone. So we can do our safe zone guides if we pull over an extra quarter of an inch, which is two of those little dashes. So let's pull down an extra quarter of an inch on each edge. And there we have our safe zone. Now we can add the text. To add the text, you can press T on your keyboard or find your text tool in the toolbar. And then you just click wherever you wanna type if you're just doing like a line of text and then you can type. But if you're doing paragraph text, that's a little different. For paragraph text, so in other words, you want it to wrap when it gets to the end, you can click and drag and you can make a little box. And now I'm going to type out my sentence. When I'm done, I'll click the check mark. Now we can edit the appearance of the text. So I want mine to be left aligned and I want it bigger. And I also want it to be a different font. So I can either change it here or I can also go to the properties panel. And if any of these panels, if you don't see any of them, you can always go to window and then just pick. So like for that one is properties, so I could just pick properties. So I'm going to click down here and pick a different font. I'll do this one and then I'll make it bigger. And then we can also change the spacing of the lines right here. So you can either put it on auto or you can change it a little bit if you want. And if it does get to where it kind of gets cut off, make sure you have the text tool. So your cursor should be this little text cursor. Click into the text and then you can make your text box bigger. And you wanna make sure that you don't get too close to this edge here because that is going to be the fold of the book. So you'd wanna keep it in a good amount. And then just a little kind of design tip is that I always like for the spacing on the top and the left to be even. I just think that it gives it a nicer kind of cleaner look. So if you want to move this around, then just make sure you click this arrow tool up here or you can also press the letter V on your keyboard. And when you have this arrow here, then you can move the text around. 
We can change the color of the text like this. I'll do white. I think I want it to actually be a little bit smaller. And then another thing is that sometimes it'll put this hyphen here and that's kind of annoying. So you can actually find the paragraph section in properties and click those three dots and then uncheck hyphenate. And now you have whole words here. Next, I'm going to put some text that's gonna go along the shell. So one thing I really like to do is make the text go along with the picture. So I'm going to press T on my keyboard and I'm going to type out and then I'll press the check mark. And I want this to be curved because I want it to go along the shell. So I'm gonna click this curve text tool up here and I'm gonna pick arc and then I can kind of modify the arc however I want. And then you can always go back and edit it later just by clicking that same thing. And now I just wanna rotate it a little bit so it goes right along the shell. So I'm going to use my arrow tool or press V on the keyboard and I'm gonna do Command T. So that means transform and that is how you can rotate it. You can also make things bigger. Hold down shift to constrain your proportions so that you don't squish it, make it too skinny or too tall. So this way I can make it go perfectly along the shell. And you can also use the arrow tools on your keyboard if you wanna get kind of more exact with it. And then press the check mark when you're done. And I'm actually gonna make this text green. So I'm gonna click over here and I wanna make it kind of match the shell. And then I'm just gonna put some text in the middle here. So I'm gonna press T and click down here. And I'm gonna make this text white. Now I'm gonna use my arrow tool to move it and then Command T because I wanna make the text a little bit bigger. And I'm kinda of too lazy to go over here and pick the size of text. One thing I wanted to show you is if you're trying to move stuff around, you're kind of having trouble grabbing certain things, you can always go to the Layers panel and this has all of your items that are in your file. So this is the text not to be in such a hurry all the time. This is because of turtle. This is the art. And then you can always turn off the auto select layer. When that's on, it'll just automatically select. And then if you have it unchecked, then you actually select it from here and move it around. Now our design is done and we can save it out. First of all, you of course want to save your Photoshop file. I'm going to name this one um, Turtle Page. And you want to make sure its format is Photoshop, and so it's going to be a PSD. And I'm going to save it. And now we want to save out the left page and the right page as separate files. Because when we bring it into Amazon KDP, we're going to have each of those as a separate page in our PDF. So I'm going to first save a copy and I'm going to do JPEG and I'll do turtle page and then whatever page number that one is going to be. So I will just name it, um, let's say this is going to be page three and four. So I'll say turtle page three and then I'll do file, save a copy, JPEG again, turtle page four. So that way we have this as two JPEGs and now we're just going to crop them. So I like to do it this way because then you don't run the risk of like cropping this and saving it over the Photoshop file and then you lose all of your information you had. So now we can open turtle page three and this is going to be the left page. So I'm going to crop it so it's only the left page. So let's zoom out. And this is my crop tool and I wanna press clear. And then we wanna make this 
make sure this is width by height by resolution and then we want to make sure that it's going to be the exact size that we want so we want to put the width first which is going to be 8.375 inches since that is what it says in Amazon KDP the height is going to be eight and a half inches and the resolution is going to be 300 dpi and then you can just move this all the way over and it should snap if it doesn't snap make sure you have view snap to guides and document bounds both of those so now we have the left side and we can press check so this is going to be our left page and then we can just do file save since it's already called turtle page three and then let's go file open and turtle page four and then this is going to be the right side so we already have our options selected here 8.375 by 8.5 so we can go ahead and click here and then just move it over and press the check mark so now we have the right side and we can just do file save and then now we're done so that is our two pages they're now done and you can go ahead and do the rest of your pages and then pretty soon i'll have the video up on how to combine those into a pdf and also we'll do how to create your cover design i hope this helped and thanks for watching bye